Mario fan games. They come in many forms, from flash games to rum hacks to standalone executables, but there's one type I feel usually gets overshadowed by the rest. Scratch games. If you're not aware, Scratch is a platform which was my and many others introduction to the scary world of programming, allowing you to easily create games, animations, or whatever else you want using these Lego-like blocks as code. Now, despite the simplistic nature of Scratch and the majority of games made of it looking like this, it's actually surprisingly capable for what it is, and has spawned a bunch of really cool Mario fan games, some of which really pushing the limits of the platform. I've already made two videos covering Mario games and Scratch in the past, but it's been over a year since the last one, and a lot has released between then and now, so hey, why not look at some more? So let's dive back into the world of Mario Scratch games. Let's begin with Bullet Bill Barrage from the user Jam58, named after everyone's favourite Super Mario Run level. This is one of those high score based survival games where you need to, well, survive, but there's more to it than just that. As you move about the small arena as the main man himself, coins will fall from the sky that you'll want to snatch up to increase your score. But as the name of the game implies, you'll also be dealing with bullet bills firing from either side of the screen. You obviously don't want to get hit by them, but you don't want to outright ignore them either. They'll just continue wrapping around the screen if you leave them be, which can really add up over time. And killing one will get you 4 times the amount of points as a single coin, so yeah, you'll definitely need to get stomping. Things start off honestly dead easy, but as the game goes on, things get more chaotic over time with bullet bills firing faster and more frequently, and with more enemy types being thrown into the mix like Bob-Ombs, Banzai Bills, and even King Bills, which are so much of a threat the game has to show this giant warning when one's about to approach. You cannot jump on these guys, so you better have cleared out any low down enemies so you can duck down below and avoid it. The game has some power-ups too. There's the stopwatch, which slows down time, making it easier to kill enemies. The star, a rare power-up that, well, I mean, you know what the star does. And lastly, the coin stack, which causes a bunch of coins to rain from the sky. Handy if you're low on HP, is collecting 15 coins gains you an extra health point. Speaking of your health, once it inevitably runs out, the game will end and display your score, along with your personal best and various other stats. And that's Bullet Bill Barrage. It's nothing super complex, but it's just a pure and simple fun game with a decent amount of polish. It's pretty satisfying with all the coin collecting, power up gaining and enemy stomping going on, especially when you manage to chain multiple bounces off enemies in a row. Now, Bullet Bill Barrage isn't the only game of its kind. Jam 58 actually made multiple of these high score based Mario survival games, all part of the Super Mario World minigame series, which explains the look of Mario's sprite. I won't bother going over each as they all play somewhat similar to each other, but each has a different set of enemies and a unique environment to differentiate themselves. With the latest one, Podoboo Pearl, having this sick volcano theme, I mean, just look at these particles, this looks really good for a scratch game. Wait, what? A remake of each of these games just released yesterday in a single collection, including a brand new one called Koopa Troopa Chaos? So yeah, I guess if you want an all-in-one collection of all of these minigames, with updated visuals, a 1HP challenge mode, a brand new minigame, and full Luigi compatibility, then check out Super Mario Minigame Frenzy. Jam 58 has also made a more traditional Mario game too, being Super Mario World Within Scratch, a short Mario World inspired platformer with original levels and a really charming art style that still captures the feel of the original. Although it's lacking some key aspects of Super Mario World such as Yoshi or the Cape Feather, this is still a decent little game. All of Mario's basic mechanics have been replicated here and done so fairly well. You can spin jump, throw objects both forwards and upwards, and even do the dance. As I said earlier, the level design is all completely original. It's fairly simple for the most part, but it is solid and emulates that classic Mario feel decently. There's also a secret exit through a keyhole in one of the levels that leads to a Switch Palace, which just like in the real deal turns previously inactive blocks solid. It's not exactly a challenge to find the secret exit, but the fact it and the Switch Palace even exist and behave just as they should do is pretty cool. The final level is definitely the best one out of the lot though. It features a bunch of classic castle enemies like Flumps and Dry Bones, a segment where you're riding a moving platform while dodging stuff and trying to catch up to it whenever it passes under a chunk of terrain, and it all ends off with a fight against none other than Jack Black himself. It's very much based off the boss fight from the original and plays similarly to it, making full use of the upwards throw mechanic. I just wish that goofy looking peach animation was here, you know the one. And yeah, Super Mario World Within Scratch is a nice wee homage to Super Mario World. It's on the shorter side, only consisting of four proper levels, but it's still a fun, short and sweet experience that you can tell a lot of effort was put into. 
Let's move on to something a bit different. Luigi's Mansion on Scratch by DuckGoose9254. This game takes the general premise of Luigi's Mansion and turns it into a 2D platformer. You play as good old Green Mario, who has once again fallen for another free mansion scam, and to absolutely no one's surprise, it's filled to the brim with ghosts that need sorting out. Unlike the official Luigi's Mansion games, Luigi can jump here because, well, it's a 2D platformer. It's not exactly a high jump, and the overall movement is much slower than your average platformer, but I think it's done this way to mimic Luigi's more limited moveset in the official games. And just like the original Luigi's Mansion, you're equipped with the Poltergust 3000 for busting those ghosts. The controls have been simplified due to the two-dimensional nature of the game, but it still works decently well, and you gotta love Luigi's face while he's using it too, my goodness. The main objective is to find and defeat King Boo, but you can't reach him until you've got at least 9 keys, which are the game's main collection. You'll find these lying around the mansion, being carried by ghosts, and even within bosses, because yeah, despite this game being on the shorter side, it does manage to pack in three unique boss fights. There's Bouldergeist from the GOAT Mario Galaxy, definitely the easiest out of the three. Just avoid the grey boulders he chugs at you and use the purple ones against him. Then there's this mutated version of one of those bush NPCs. Oh yeah, there's NPCs in this game by the way, forgot to mention that. It's a big step up in difficulty from Bouldergeist, maybe a bit too much? It spawns these slime puddles that you need to dodge and vacuum up, but there's very little time between when one spawns in to when it can hurt you. Unless you've got lightning fast reaction time, you're guaranteed to take a lot of damage from this boss, but you can cheese it by leaving the arena, refilling your health at this heart, and heading back in, which is definitely not what I did. And then lastly, there's Big King Boo himself. He tosses his blue flames up into the air that fall back down to the ground, and he can deal damage to him whenever he takes a break from attacking. The fight lasts for quite a while, and to be honest it is a bit repetitive, but if you push through and concentrate, you can collect the final key to beat the game. Yes! I'm a winner! Overall, Luigi's Mansion on Scratch is a decent little game. It's a wee bit janky here and there, and I did get myself softlocked once, but it's still an enjoyable game, offering a unique experience by converting Luigi's Mansion into a side-scroller. We're now going to go over a couple of Super Mario Bros. 1 inspired games, starting off with Super Mario Rebooted from Coder4536. First of all, like this title screen is really cool. Like I love these little animations with Mario hitting the block that says press space and how he jumps into a pipe when you start the game. Bye bye. As you can tell, this game is very clearly based off the original Super Mario Bros. The physics are quite different, but Mario still controls well, and most things behave just like they do in the original, from being able to bonk enemies from below blocks to even really subtle things like piranha plants staying inside pipes while you stand beside them. Also, there's a run button in this game, and Mario is like mad. Fun for whatever reason, but honestly, I kind of like it. Unlike the previous games we've looked at, this one's pretty lengthy for Scratch standards. There's currently over 30 levels on offer, split across 7 worlds. Yeah, I know there's only 6 worlds on screen, but don't listen to the main menu, it is lying, it cannot be trusted. The first world isn't too special, to be honest. It consists of 4 levels all loosely based off the first floor from SMB1. They're still well designed, but I'd say world 2 is where the game truly begins. This is where the level design becomes more of its own thing, and where you'll start seeing new mechanics that weren't present in the original game. The second world focuses on what I like to call the modern mushroom. This grants Mario abilities from his more recent appearances, allowing him to wall jump and ground pound. It even changes his sound effects to match those of the new soup games. And then in World 3 you start seeing ice blocks, auto-scrolling, and the introduction of the penguin suit. World 4 features on-off blocks, 5 has no blocks and bob and at this point the game feels more like Mario Maker than Mario Bros. And after the lava-themed World 6, you can find a secret 7th world consisting of 8 levels, the level design gets especially wacky in this world, in a good way for the most part. By the way, you know the toad at the end of the castle levels in Super Mario Bros that always say that one quote? Well yeah, that's here. But after his first appearance, the toad begins saying different phrases which I was not expecting at all, and yes, apparently this is the same toad every single time, and not even he knows how he's getting in these situations. And that does it for Super Mario Rebooted. My only real issues with the game is that sometimes the brick blocks don't break if you're too far on the left or right of them, and the physics could be slightly improved. But other than that, it's a pretty good Super Mario Bros. 1 inspired Scratch game. There's plenty of levels here and a good variety of mechanics that will keep you busy for a while. It took me around 40 minutes to complete the game, which is pretty substantial for a Scratch game.
But if that's not enough for your SMB1 needs, here's another one. Super Mario Country Land from Tfun47. And this one's even bigger. This game borrows some elements from newer Mario games, just like Super Mario Rebooted, but it does a lot of things differently too. Firstly, this game has a hub world of sorts, split across multiple worlds, and each level also contains free star coins, just like the new soup games. But unlike those games, once you've collected a star coin, you've got it for good. Even if you die or you exit the level, you'll still have it. I'd honestly prefer if it was more like the new sub games, but that doesn't stop some of the coins from still being a challenge. Countryland's physics are probably the closest we've seen so far to the official 2D Mario games, and here wall jumping and ground pounding are just part of Mario's default moveset. For the most part, the level design's really good too, featuring a wide range of mechanics and enemies to keep things interesting. Other than a few of the water levels being a bit of a drag, which yeah, there's water in this game, the majority of levels are really fun. There's also quite a large selection of power-ups, from Fire Mario to Propeller Mario to Gold Mario, which I'm surprised is here. They've even got the legendary blue shell in here. You obviously come across these power-ups through the game's levels, but you can optionally buy them from the in-game item shop too, giving a reason to collect all those shiny coins other than just satisfaction. Like Super Mario World within Scratch, this game features secret exits, though they work a bit differently here. You need to find a secret key and bring it to the flagpole, not just a random keyhole, and this will open up a secret path in the hub world, leading to later levels. Speaking of levels, there's over 40 in total split across 9 worlds. Like, this is massive for a Scratch game, and they're not exactly short levels either. They're similar in length to normal, modern 2D Mario levels. And took me multiple hours to clear them all and get every star coin, which just goes to show how challenging and big this game is, well, for Scratch standards of course. Other than Collision being a bit unfair at times, and a few weird bugs here and there, Super Mario Country Land is a great game with tons of content on offer. But what if that's still not enough? What if you want a game with infinite content? Well, there's always Mario Maker games. I've covered a few of them in the past, such as the mega impressive Super Mario Maker 3 and 4, but today I'll be covering one that didn't exist back then. Super Mario Mayhem Maker by MarioFan235. So obviously in the official Mario Maker games, you've got game styles based off official Mario games. But here, all the game styles are based off different Mario Scratch games from various creators, some of which I've covered before. This makes for a really unique crossover that can only really be done here in Scratch. Just like the real deal, each game style has their own themes, except Super Mario 4 Scratch for some reason, and differing mechanics, such as the Super Mario 2D Land one allowing you to roll, and being able to paraglide in the Super Mario Z style. And if you couldn't tell by the text at the bottom, I'm actually playing one of the built-in title screen levels because, yeah, they're a thing here. Anyway, let's talk about the actual level editor now. It's pretty easy to use with its simple Mario Maker-esque interface. You just choose your object from the hotbar, or the full object menu, and drag away to place. Unfortunately, the object limit is a wee bit low, however there is a way around this. By running the game in a modified version of Scratch called Turbo Warp, you can disable the limit of clones sprite Scratch has, allowing you to build much larger levels. This also fixes a potential soft lock in the editor that can occur if you reach the in-game object limit, so if you want to try the game I definitely recommend using Turbo Warp. Anyway, back to the fun stuff. The editor's got a decent selection of items, objects, and enemies to mess with, including many elements missing in Mario Maker 1 and 2, from the Mega Mushroom to Cataquax to my boy Flood. There are also some more original elements too, like this blue Bowser head thing, which is based off the final boss from Super Mario in Scratch. A few select objects also have adjustable style, size, and rotation too, and there's several level settings to adjust, from the time limit to the size of the current sub area, because sub areas are here, and you can have up to three of them and even mix and match their game styles. Probably the most important level setting though is the goal type. You could either make a simple point A to point B linear level that ends up with a goal pole and just have power stars as optional collectibles. Or you could make a more open-ended level where finding power stars is the main objective, requiring some or all of them to clear the level. Once you've finished building your level, you can export it as a string of text which you can copy and share with others. Super Mario Mayhem Maker is honestly such a cool project. Not only is it a decent Mario Maker game, but it feels like a celebration of the Mario community here in Scratch, and there's something really wholesome about seeing all these Mario fan games cross over with each other. Alright, the video is coming to an end, but I've got one last game to talk about. 
So in my first video on Mario Scratch games, I talked about Super Mario and Scratch 6, Enlightened. A seriously impressive Scratch game from the same person who made that Luigi's Mansion platformer. It really pushes the limits of Scratch with large open worlds, fluid movement and gorgeous graphics. It's also one of the game styles in Mario Mayhem Maker. Anyway, since then Duck Goose has made another Mario game, Super Mario and Scratch 5, Elevated. Now, if you're familiar with the concept of numbers, you may have noticed that's a 5, not a 7. And that's because this is a remake of the previous game, Super Mario and Scratch 5. No subtitle. The word remake is an understatement though, it's more of a reimagining of it with larger, revamped levels, in addition to completely new ones. And yes, the visuals are now absolutely stunning for a Scratch game. Most sprites and environments are really polished and detailed, while still maintaining that distinct Scratch charm, which along with the day-night cycle some levels have and other effects, can make the game feel pretty immersive. That's enough about graphics flow, let's get to the actual gameplay. First of all, Mario's got an expansive moveset. He can jump, wall jump, long jump, triple jump, backflip, spin, dive and everything else here on screen. And other than swimming, which is a little bit clunky, everything controls buttery smooth. The game's levels are similar to Mario 64 or Odyssey, as they follow the more open sandbox level design where you're hunting down power moons, really letting Mario's wide moveset shine. They're quite big, and most have an upper region above the main level consisting of floating islands, giving off strong Tears of the Kingdom energy. Each of the game's seven core levels has eight power moons to collect, including two for getting all red coins and 75 coins. There's also an equivalent to the Grand Star or Multi Moon that each main level has, called the Crystal Moon. They're counted separately from the regular moons and kick you out of levels for some reason, I kinda wish they didn't. There's a good variety of level elements across the game, like the wide array of enemies you'll encounter, including the dreaded eel from Mario 64, the Mario Bros 2-esque picking up and throwing mechanics, the various power-ups you'll find like the Vanish Cap and Cloud Flower, and the several bosses you'll encounter, from Goom Boss to the Return of King Boo to... <laughs> Speaking of King Boo, he's the boss of this ghost house and outdoor snow level hybrid, where poor Luigi's being held captive. Hello. Once you've defeated the Eerie Emperor, you can then play as Luigi and swap between him and Mario with the press of a button. There's also this Zelda-inspired level involving catching fairies and lighting torches for moons. Not to mention the appearance of Zelda himself from the critically acclaimed Legend of Link series. And of course, things have to end off with a lava-themed level, featuring a fight not against Bowser, but Dry Bowser, and after his first phase Dry Dark Bowser. But once you've defeated him, the game isn't over just yet. Because if you collect every moon, you'll unlock a very tough secret finale level, kinda like Mario Galaxy 2's perfect run, as you've only got one health point for the majority of it. On top of that, the game also has a speedrun in insane difficulty mode, where you've only got one health point for the entire game, and if you die, that's it, you get sent straight back to the title screen and your entire progress, gone. It's kind of like Minecraft Hardcore mode. Additionally, there's several achievements you can go for if you want, and not too long ago the game got a fairly big update that adds in three new achievements tied to new content. There's now a secondary hub world containing two smaller levels that feature Mario Wonder-esque wonder effects, and once you fully complete them both, wonder flowers will appear in every main level in the base game. There's also a boss rush in an invisible mode too, which gives you an achievement if you beat the final boss with it. And that's Super Mario on Scratch 5 Elevated. It's super polished, ambitious, and packed with content for being on Scratch. It's not without a few bugs and quirks, but aside from that, this is a really solid Mario fan game, and one of the most impressive on the site. And there you have it. That was yet another dive into the world of Mario fan games on Scratch. As you've seen, despite Scratch's simplicity, the platform's still home to a ton of really cool Mario fan games, from fun shot experiences to full-scale adventures pushing what can be done with the platform, and I really recommend giving any of these games a shot. But with that said, the video's come to an end, so thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.